How you doing? Good, you look good. I'm looking through the camera. Let's see, who was that? And when I was five years old, romper room, and I see Mary, and I see Susie. Thanks for watching today, you guys. <laughs> oh, thinking about my childhood a little bit this week, I was uh, sitting in my car. I sometimes work in my car, all right? I do pretty much every day at the park. And uh, Saturday, they were playing soccer, lots of different soccer games going on. And it reminded me of my years in fourth and fifth grade. It was a big deal to play soccer, just the girls. So in recess and lunchtime, we go out and play soccer. It was a hoot. And you wound up with a few bruised ankles, but it was still good, good times. And I was thinking of that last summer. I was at my sister's house. She was having a big picnic family and lots of her kids and their kids, so little ones running around with lots of balls flying around, and somebody threw me a ball, and I, I did the big kickoff like I did back in soccer, and my body went, what? <laughs> All the money you paid to the chiropractor, and now look at you. <laughs> Something must be going on inside my body that I'm not aware of. It's a little disappointing, I have to say. No more soccer for Kitty. And I, I was thinking about that this week because we're, we're talking about aging with spirit, finding a way to move forward in life, especially when we get into our elder years, from a consciousness of spirit. And I really wanted to focus on the body today. We've been talking about other aspects of, you know, our elder years, but today we're talking about the body. And it's an opportunity for us to just realize we would never be having this life's journey without it. It is such a gift to us. Everything that you experience in this human life has to happen through this body. What a gift it has given us. And it's not like you trade it in every few years like you do with your cars. I'm just saying. It's the same one. Isn't that amazing? It's the same one since you were born. Same heart, same lungs. Holy cow, thank you. That, that's where I go. Wow, thank you. I know that it, it pretty much does what it needs to do without being told. It's a lot of automatic pilot. But there are times when it gives us a shout out because we're not helping it when we need to help it. I mean, Truly, it's our job to make sure it gets enough water. It can't just walk itself to the faucet, right? We have to let it go to bed or lay down somewhere, you know, even if it's on the floor in front of the TV. It needs to rest. It needs nutritious, 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 nutritious foods. <laughs> and... You are involved in that process. It needs to be cleaned up every once in a while. It needs to get some fresh air, some movement in its life. You, meaning the conscious you, gets to choose whether that happens or not. So it will let you know, but then it's up to you to make sure that you're responding to it the way that it needs. And the biggest response I would offer today is that you respond with gratitude and appreciation for all the good that it's providing, for the amazing system that is going on inside of you in any given moment. Thank you. Just put your hand on your heart and say, thank you, body. Yeah. Yeah. And most of the time when we do notice the body or talk to the body, it's because it's crying out and we want to shame it and blame it. So let's talk a little bit about our role in this aging process. I mean, the truth is, when you were born, you started aging. That's just the word I'll use. You may not use that when you're young, but technically you're getting older <laughs> with every year. And for a good part of our life, we're looking forward to that process, right? I mean, when you're a baby and you're starting to crawl a little bit, you're looking around and seeing people on two feet, and they're like, when can I do that? I want to do that until they are doing that. And then they're looking around at their uh, teenage brothers driving a car, and when can I do that? I want to do that. And you're in your teen years, and you're looking at all the adults running around and not having to go to school, not having to be told what to do. I want to do that. Then they get into their young adult years, and they go to work, and they see their boss making all this money, and I want to be that. I want to have that. I want to get older so I can be there. So we're always looking onward with anticipation. 
and joy and eagerness until all of a sudden you're back to having to take naps in the afternoon. And your stamina isn't quite there like it used to be. And you're no longer needed at work or you no longer have the stamina for work or you're in the doctor's office more often or you're hearing um, or thinking more about what your parents died of all of a sudden or you're on medication now more than you ever were. And really, the two biggest things I think that we start to get concerned about in the aging process is what will it be like or will it be like to lose my independence? And what will I die of? I think almost every human being, when they get to a certain age, start wondering those two things. So, of course, we want to avoid those, the answers to those questions as long as possible, and we start looking for ways to avoid it. And I have to say this uh, baby boomer generation is probably the largest generation that has moved into the elder years all at once. So we are actually putting quite a demand on the system to help us maintain our abilities, even in our elder years. And I was watching uh, the movie The Two Popes. Has anybody seen that movie? This was, um, you remember when Pope Benedict gave up the papacy to, who, who then became Pope Francis, yes. And before the transition happened, the two of them were chatting really about it for the first time, at least in the movie. And it turns out that Pope Benedict is walking around and suddenly this voice speaks out from his wrist. And it says, don't stop now. Keep moving. Keep moving. Kid you not. Every time he would sit for too long, this little wristband would say, don't stop now. Keep moving. Keep moving. Don't even think about getting me one of those. <laughs> but I'm just saying that there are resources out there to help you, no matter what age you are, in case your body needs some assistance. And you know, movement is important as we move into the aging process, into the elder years. I thought I would just show you today, actually you're going to be invited to join me in this process, um, on how to stay moving even if you're not very mobile. So we're going to do a little video here uh, together where you can either stand or sit. I'm going to sit just so I can show you how, how great I am at this. All right, <laughs> let's give it a try. I'll have to watch them get started. One, zero. All right, we got a classic move next, but it's just so good. I always use it. Just okay. a good old march Opposite in place. Arm from your knee. Just to allow our heart rate to come up. Go ahead and keep both elbows bent opposite and bring up arm opposite from the leg arm and knee. How you doing? And core stays tight. You're looking good. You can't get that knee up very high. Don't That's have to okay. Lift your knee up just try very to high. sit up off the ground. Don't listen to him. Listen to me. Good just right now. You can go barely get that off knee the floor. All the way enough. up until it's about parallel to the there ground. There you go. Side, just so you see which a little movement. Which is right for you. Okay, which is right for you. See how easy that is? Don't you feel more strong and agile and able? Okay. So then <clears throat> another thing that we focus on in our aging process is making sure that we are balancing our brain hemispheres. Now this, believe it or not, might be a little bit tricky for me anyway. So <clears throat> we've got two different exercises to do here and I will try and show you, I will try and match what he's doing. But I think I've learned that the best thing to do is to start with one hand up here and one hand down here and let's go ahead and start the video. One hand up, one hand down, and spin the wheels in the air. Up and down. You can change directions. You have four We're combinations. We're going to change directions. Okay, go. Uh, how you doing? Circling, circling, circling. I think we're not all doing See, it's hard, isn't it? Not all doing it in the same way. But that's okay. Good try. Keep going. And then at some point he changes, right? Has he changed yet? Okay, go back the other way. Mm, mm, mm. Rats. I think I was already doing that. Let's try this. How you doing? Looking really crazy out there. Okay, wait. I can't keep them apart. Is he done? Okay, now this next one. I think it's something like five minutes a day. 
That's all you have to do. Okay, so this one, your one hand is going to go for your nose. That's going to be the inside hand. The outside hand is going to go across to your opposite ear. Okay, so just put your hands there right now so you know. Ear, sorry, this is your ear. This is your nose. Okay, then you're going to put your hands down, and you're going to do the opposite. Nose and ear. Down and opposite again. I can't even remember where I had up there last. But let's show, let him show us and see what you can do. Just, okay. Second exercise. All right, he's going pretty fast. Oh, my gosh, I missed my ear. Oh, wait, this side. Oh, wait, wrong side. Oh, no. I'm so screwed up. I have to start over. Okay. Nose and ear. Nose and ear. Nose and ear. Is any? Okay. How'd you do? See, I figured that it, if you don't get it right, you at least laugh pretty hard. I almost poked my eye out like four times. I couldn't find my ear. Okay, but the point is when you do this, it starts to balance your left and right brain. That's also good for us. Uh, no matter what age we are, by the way, they, you know, they come up with games like this for kids just to keep their little brains balanced. So if it doesn't feel like you're up to that, that's okay. Do whatever you can do to keep forward motion, even if it's just with your mind. Even if it's picking up a book, listening to a podcast, calling somebody on the phone, writing somebody a note, just you're putting your energy out there. We've got an online class coming up. You can take it at home this week. And also, as you're finding ways to keep in motion, make sure that it's involving positive energy. So don't hang out too much with the negative people, the naysayers. Don't watch too much news. But do enjoy spending time or talking with people that uplift you, because that energy is important. And... If you need to be doing something that you don't really want to do, ask for help. Would you be willing to do that? Elders, ask for help. So I'm just thinking of now our younger generation that's watching and our middle years. This is your chance to be of help, your chance to find out what somebody might need. I'm going to ask you to just think of one person right now in your life that's in their elder years that lives alone that might need some assistance or just some company at some point. And so I'm talking about uh, maybe giving them a ride, keeping them engaged with their social system. So, you know, take them to unity with you or make sure that they get over to see, um, you know, a, a favorite friend, get them to the store or go for them, go out and get their mail or take something to the post office for them. I used to, when I would go see my mom, I'd get out her phone book and not like the, the big phone book, like her personal phone book. <laughs> And we just start calling people um, because she could no longer hear on the phone. So I would listen, and I would translate for her what they were saying. And because I was sitting right there with her, she could see me. So these are things that you can be doing. You know, um, maybe they have achy hands or feet. Give them a little foot massage while you're there. Do a load of laundry. Obviously, ask. Ask. <laughs> ask first if there's something you can help with. But, you know, sometimes it's difficult for people to ask for help. So bring it up. Make a suggestion. And recognize that this is a gift for you, too. This is your opportunity to learn how to become a good listener, how to be more compassionate and build up your patience and learn from their life stories and experience the joy of giving to others and supporting others. It's a win-win situation here. And I trust that many of you, most of you that are here today or watching online are um, already still active seniors and you're just wanting to look for ways on how to stay active. So a couple studies were done, one by a psychologist from Harvard, Ellen Langer. She wanted to do a study on how aging could be reversed through changes in self-perception. Yeah. So what she did is she took 75-year-old or older men out to the country and left them there. And just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. So she, she took, she took, <laughs> I wouldn't mind being left alone in the country. All right, so she took them out to the country, and there was one group that was just the control group, and they just 
had a week in the country. The other group, they did a few things. They were asked to um, imagine that they were 20 years younger than they were. And so, first of all, they were asked to wear clothes that they wore 20 years ago. Um, they were asked to think like they did 20 years ago. They were asked to talk about things that they would have 20 years ago. Uh, they were asked to um, listen to music, only music, from 20 years ago. Their photo ID badge had to be something, a picture of them from 20 years ago. If they were married, had family, then when they talked about their family, they should talk about them as if it was 20 years ago and the situations you were in there. Um, if you'd had a career, then you'd be talking about what you were doing in your career 20 years ago. You would listen to the same music. Did I say that? You would um, basically just become that person you were 20 years ago and do that for a week. So the control group, as I said, really didn't make any changes to their behavior, but it was the group that was playing make-believe. Here's what happened to them. Their memory improved. They had better manual dexterity. They were more active, more self-sufficient. They took photographs before and after. Their faces were younger by three years, according to people's opinions. Uh, if they'd come in with stiff joints, they were more flexible, their posture was starting to straighten, their muscles were getting stronger, and their hearing and vision improved. Yeah, just by pretending. So Deepak Chopra wrote about this in his book, Ageless Body, Timeless Mind, and he said, the study was landmark in proving that so-called irreversible signs of aging could be reversed using psychological intervention. By increasing someone's awareness, bringing it into a new focus, and breaking out of old patterns, you can alter aging. That's pretty amazing, right? And I want to remind you that part of the reason this is so is because your bodies are listening and vibrating, and when you in consciousness vibrate at a certain frequency, your cells are going to follow along. So you can choose to focus on uh, what you're worried about might happen to your body or what is in the process of happening to your body that you don't like and spend your emotional energy in fear. However, that's the type of energy that is lower and slower than the spiritual dimension is, and therefore it's going to start creating constriction in your body. And that's the last thing we want when we're moving into our elder years. And we're also activating that divine law that we talk about here all the time, that we create our life experience through our thoughts and feelings and beliefs. Let it be done to you as you believe, Jesus said. So we can either look ahead with fear, or we can focus in this now moment on things that make us happy, things that feel good. Not only do things that feel good, but think of things that feel good to you, your desires of your heart, or... Um, thinking about the beauties in nature, thinking about the people that you love in your life, what you're grateful for, you get to be your, your body's best friend. It's your job to become your body's best friend. And really, we should be doing that throughout our entire life. But not only make time to do the stretching and the moving of the physical body, but the stretching and the moving of your thoughts and your emotions, and turn those thoughts towards the body. Bless it. Bless it your body and your body parts. You got one that's, you know, crying out for attention, give it some love and praise. Remind the body of the divine potential within you. Emily Cady was one of Unity's founding writers. She wrote some of our main textbooks, and she said, the outer life is but the outflowing of the inner life, and that inner life is fed from the fountain of life moment by moment, through the Christ at the center of our being. God gives his own life freely to all who can receive it. That's the last important part there. There's divine life flowing because God is omnipresence, God is omniscience, God is omnipotence, everywhere present, but only if we can receive it. And we receive it not by focusing on what our parents died of, not by focusing on uh, our pains and illnesses and talking about them all day long. I'm not saying don't ignore them or share them with someone, but just know, am I that person who this is all I ever talk about when I get together with people? There's another affirmation we could say instead up here on the screen. In God I live and move and have my being. Will you say that with me? 
In God I live and move. a spiritualized form of exercise called yoga. Anybody do yoga? Okay. So it's most often thought about as exercises that produce certain postures that help to create more strength and flexibility and balance in the body. Um, and if you've never done yoga, then trying to do yoga, you know, when you're in your 70s or 80s might be a bit much for the body. But... There's another version of yoga, and it's actually the main definition of what the word is. And that is, up here on the screen, it's the joining together of the individual's consciousness with the infinite consciousness. That's something we can do no matter how old our body is, is to make life being... would that look like if our life experience is about joining our body consciousness with our spirit consciousness? That's what I mean when I say aging with spirit. So start by thinking about what spirit consciousness sees when it sees life, when it knows life. What might be some of the divine qualities that spirit holds in consciousness for the expression of life? Anybody? Besides life itself, what else might life express as in the spiritual mind? Vitality, creativity, flow, happiness, clarity, joy, compassion, light, energy, power, grace, all words that spirit expresses as in us if we put our mind on them and become them in consciousness. So we're talking about making our conscious choices align with spirit. This is from Myrtle Fillmore, who's one of our co-founders of Unity. She said, fix your undivided attention upon the inner divine Once, long ago, I took piano lessons. And when she said chording, that we're chording with divine law, I immediately thought of musical chords, right? And chords are when you play like three notes at the same time and they sound good together, right? So this is a C chord. You play them together. Mm, all together. Mm, doesn't that sound good? Okay, good. All right. And... That is what we call a major chord. Now, here's what we call a minor chord. Ooh. Okay, when you hear the difference, what does this sound like in comparison to this? Sad. I thought so, too. Yeah, so major, happy, light, everything working for good, feels good. How dreary. Everything should be dark right now, right? Okay, so what's interesting is to go from here to here is just to take one of those notes and drop it down a half step so it goes from here, this one little tiny step. But notice it went down. And to me, that is lowering the frequency. So let's just imagine when we say courting with divine law, it means that what we're thinking feels good and light. And when we're not thinking uh, thoughts that feel good and light, we've dropped them down some in frequency, lower and slower than the spiritual dimension is flowing as. Is that too complicated? Do you understand that? So we're looking for major chords in our life, things that feel good when we say them, when we think them, so that we know we are in alignment with spirit. 
So let's look for some practices in life, no matter what age we are, that bring that sense of courting with spirit into our conscious awareness that feel good. There's another study done by a psychologist, another Harvard psychologist, Charles Alexander, and he went into three senior centers in Boston, and he taught them mind-body techniques um, and used different ones at different locations. So one of the groups was taught how to do relaxation exercises with their muscles, and one group was taught how to do transcendental meditation, and one group was uh, taught how to play word games, you know, like sharpening your mental skills. And the results were that the meditators had the most improvement. They uh, scored the highest in learning ability, uh, they had lower blood pressure overall, and their mental health was better because they had meditated versus relaxed their muscles or played word games. And he went back in to see everyone again three years later, and one-third of these people had passed away. But of the, the third, none of them were meditators. All the meditators were still living. Now, why do you suppose that is, that meditation would be more effective than relaxation exercises? We go within. But we're going within for our body, aren't we? Spirit? Connecting with something higher? Yeah. So part of this is about, um, instead of focusing on muscles, in transcendental meditation, you choose a spiritual idea, and you just hold that in mind, a spiritual idea. So you're drawing your consciousness toward higher words. You're courting with divine law, as Myrtle said. You're focusing on thoughts of God and the divine qualities that are present within and around us. So as we do that, that actually could affect your muscles too. Win-win, right? Start with meditation. Everything else starts to fall into place. Our vibration raises. So it's ideas of life and strength and ease that we want to meditate on and the body response. And transcendental meditation, taking a mantra, a saying of some kind, to focus on. I, we use those in unity all the time. We call them affirmations. So let's say a few of these up here on the screen and see if we can't get in the flow of this together. In God, are we there? Did I miss? Oh, I'm sorry, Susan. You must be so confused. <laughs> well, let's go on to the next slide where we can see the affirmations and let's say it together. In God, I live and move and have my being. I be oh, Just pop them up there. I behold divine life in me. I allow my spiritual body to empower me. I make healthy choices today. I love you, body, and I'm grateful for you. Those are just simple one few words, phrases that you can hold in consciousness. Now, the thing that I skipped that I want to come back to is how Jesus said to do this. Um, this is from Matthew 11. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and you'll recover your life. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. He's giving us a chance to turn to that Christ spirit within us. It's our higher self. It's that part of us that is God expressing. Turn in that direction. Think as God thinks. Put your mind on things that are God expressing when it comes to our body. And using those affirmations that we just did are another way to keep at it. Our other co-founder, Charles Fillmore, uh, was known to have woken up when he was 94 years old. He woke up one morning singing... I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm, and I spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. At 94, he was turning his thoughts within to that higher state of being. So when we talk about aging with spirit, we're talking about courting your being with, in a way that's in harmony with spirit. Courting your being in harmony with with spirit. So up here on the screen, we're talking about courting our thoughts with ideas of life and courting our imagination with pictures of well-being, courting our feelings 
with divine love, courting our words with spiritual truth, courting our actions with divine light. That's ours to do when we want to be aging with spirit, as spirit. 